No one is perfect. That's why I made this video. In fact, I just started a whole new series just because of this idea. Every band out there has issues. Every musical artist in the world has fucked up somewhere along the line. And it's inevitable, especially in music. We all have visions that need to be corrected. Innovation can get out of hand, creations can be misunderstood, or poorly presented. You get the point. This series will attempt to objectively demonstrate the many slip-ups in the careers of several highly successful bands. And the first band we're critiquing is my personal favorite, you've probably already guessed it's Metallica. And I'll make it clear just before we begin, if you expect any hating or trolling, then this video will disappoint you. The first problem is loudness. The loudness war has been going on in music for decades, and Metallica are veterans. Although the first time they got criticized for being loud was in 2008, when Death Magnetic came out, they actually had been pretty loud way before, specifically on four records. Ride the Lightning, Master of Puppets, and Justice for All, and the Black Album. I don't know if you agree with me, but I personally couldn't sit through any of these four without getting ear fatigue. And it even happened after Death Magnetic, of course we're talking about Hardwire to Self Destruct. And it's strange that these albums were produced by four different people, yet only one of them is an infamous war criminal. Number 2. Drum Mixing I could have just said mixing and been more general, but there's a lot to talk about here, so I decided to comment on things separately. Ever since day one, there has been a ton of praise and criticism for Lars Ulrich's sound. On Kill Em All and Ride the Lightning, the bass drum is barely audible. On Ride the Lightning, the snare is too loud. Fast forward all the way to Hardwired, both bass and snare drums are extremely loud. And by the way, St. Anger also has an issue, and no, it's not the snare sound. I've given my take on it long ago, you can check it out. The real problem is actually in the overall mixing, which you're probably aware of. There are parts of certain songs, like the verse on the unnamed feeling, where the cymbals are so f***ing loud in an irritating way. That makes it difficult to listen to the vocals. Number 3 bass mixing. I wish I was just talking about the Justice album. I'm actually talking about half their discography. Two of Metallica's top influences are Black Sabbath and Iron Maiden. These two have one thing in common, audible and innovative bass. Very strangely, Metallica has been known for taking the opposite direction. Now Metallica's bass has always been very innovative, no doubt about it. But on five of their albums, it was buried in the mix. Ride the Lightning, Master of Puppets, and Justice for All, Death Magnetic, and Hardwired. I'll give you some major examples. On Fight Fire with Fire, there is a lot going on that you don't even hear at all. My bass playing changed and improved a lot after hearing that. The interlude part from Damage Incorporated. And you know all about Justice. By the way, there is an awesome part on Broken Beat and Scarred where Rob isn't following the guitars. And on Hardwired, he is barely heard. Number 4. Guitar Focused Now this is inevitable in rock music, although some new extreme bands, Death Sport, Tech Death, etc have changed that, and you can practically hear all instruments loud and clear. But Metallica doesn't follow that. What I mean by being guitar focused, or riff based, is that the guitars stand out the most in the mix. Just like in the most popular music nowadays, pretty much all songs are vocal focused. This is considered a cliche, therefore it is a problem. Number 5. Repetition Every artist suffers from a certain amount of repetition, and you will see that throughout the series. How did Metallica repeat itself, you ask? Hmm, let's see. Lyrics about death, anger, insanity, and or the apocalypse have been written for all records. The intro, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, solo, verse, chorus, outro structure has been used for 40 f***ing years. Not on all songs, of course. Similar thrash riffs and beats have been played on 7 out of 10 albums. And I want to point out one thing, one tiny detail that has been heard on all Metallica releases. I like to call this one the Master of Puppets lick because it's most famously heard on Master of Puppets, the song. It's the blues or you want to call it tritone lick that goes like this. <laughs> 
Metallica has overused the shit out of this one, and people don't even talk about it. Number 5. Overdone. This is a very obvious one, and I'm sure all listeners have noticed this and felt bothered by it. Metallica is the type of band that could take a riff and go all day and night playing it just for the sake of... well, I don't even know what for. Examples. Four Horsemen, Call of Cthulhu, Orion, To Live Is To Die, The Outlaw Torn, Low Man's Lyric, Invisible Kid, The Day That Never Comes, and Now That We're Dead. Notice how I skipped the Black Album? It was all about radio friendliness in 1991. All those songs are way too long and should have been cut shorter. You'll notice a common pattern and that is the repetition of certain riffs way too many times. You will also notice that the most overdone songs are the instrumentals. Hmm, what could that mean? I say it could mean that the less lyrics are written for a song, the more Metallica feels the urge to repeat. What are your thoughts on this? And number 6, Ego. The biggest setback this band has had in its entire career, and still does, is supersized egos. This actually ties to the aforementioned mixing faults, since day one it's been the band of Lars and James. This actually got way worse after Cliff Burton's death. Since then, the writing process has been almost completely overtaken by the guitar and drums duo. This has forever been called out by critics and fans, as it's been considered the reason behind the inaudibility of bass in 1988, the curbing of Jason Newstead's creativity on the Black Album, Load and Reload, the departure of the bass player, the conflicts in the early 2000s, and the underutilization of Robert Trujillo's superb skills on Death Magnetic and Hardwired to self-destruct. That's all I got my friends, thank you very much for watching and listening, did you enjoy, I hope you did, do you agree with my thoughts or not? If yes, tell me in the comments. If no, also tell me in the comments. Go ahead and tell me what you think. Arguments and questions are welcome. Thanks again, have fun, take care, and I'll see you next time.